Hello, it is Rachel from 7 and All, and today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of my homeschool space and just sharing some tips, inspiration, and encouragement for homeschool book and resource organization. Now, uh, we just moved into a new house this past fall, as many of you do know, and I kind of took took a little while to get the feel for what our school routine would look like in this new house and just kind of adjusted our organization and adjusted how I set up the homeschool space as I figured out what we actually did. When we first toured this house, I imagined that we would be doing schoolwork upstairs in the little kind of foyer area between all the bedrooms. But in reality, I typically do a lot of schoolwork with my older son when my little one is taking his nap so we don't want to be doing schoolwork right outside his bedroom door or else we're doing school activities while baby brother is running around playing downstairs. So it turned out it actually works a lot better for us to do school downstairs during this stage of life. And so ended up setting everything up, moving everything down here. And I'm going to show you how I have it all organized. Now, first of all, I do have the ubiquitous cart which you can see all over the homeschool world these days i actually had this cart before i even had kids it used to contain like all my accessories and jewelry and stuff um, but those days are gone at this point <laughs> once my boys were toddlers they were pulling um, jewelry off of it and all that and also i kind of stopped wearing jewelry <laughs> because of them now it works better for me to use it to just keep our everyday books and art supplies. So here on the top, in these magazine racks, I have just a couple of workbooks, some folders of like coloring sheets, our morning binder, our preschool math at home book, our little learning cards in a little pouch. I change these out every week to whatever we're studying. My notebook that I use for our just recording our daily schedule for reverse recording. This is my Puramente Preescolar binder with all the lessons. It's getting a little full. Apparently I've made too many units of Puramente Preescolar for one binder. But this is the stuff that I'll pull out on an everyday basis. And we have a little box of crayons here. And then here a box of glue sticks and scissors. Both much beloved tools. Some paint. Um, watercolors and paintbrushes, colored pencils, and on the bottom I have a few sets of games, flashcards, a memory tiles game. So my general routine is that I'll pull out anything from here and any storybooks from the bookshelf that I'm going to use on an everyday basis and I'll put them on the table. I typically do this on the morning before school um, starts sometime in my morning routine or possibly the night before but it's usually the morning of. I'll just put everything on the table kind of to the back of the table and then when we do school as we do school I just put things away as they get completed and that's kind of my routine. You might notice we have an unusually fancy school table and chairs. Um, we I wouldn't normally be homeschooling on this kind of stone marble topped table but this is the furniture that belongs to our landlord and it, it was in the house and it's very heavy and it's staying in this spot <laughs> um, then here is my big bookshelf my big um, cubby style bookshelf this is the ikea calyx that is very popular for good reason we've had this for about seven years and it's always been full. I always um, love books. Today it holds more children's books um, because this is what I want to have more accessible and more of our grown-up books have gone up to our bedrooms and are um, more hidden away up there. Um, but I want to take a minute to let, tell you some encouragement for a homeschool organization. Remember that the per whole purpose of organization is for it to serve you. It's to serve you and to serve the people who live in your house. So you are not homeschooling 
so that something will look good on Instagram. You're not homeschooling for someone else who values different things than you and needs different things than you. So you're going to notice something about my bookshelves that you would not see on a lot of homeschool influencers bookshelves. Cardboard box, cardboard box, old cardboard box, cardboard boxes, kind of some mismatched boxes here. This was, can you see that Kit Kat? This was a random free thing that came with Kit Kats years ago. Nice little organization box. You see for me, I just don't have a really high value of matching perfect looking organizational containers. Um, if I did, and if that's you, you know, if that matters to you, if that brings you joy, if that's a value and a need for you, then you can go out and you can buy nice, pretty, matching organizational containers. For me, it's just for me, I value more using what I already have, using what's free, more than having something that's very beautiful and aesthetic and matching. Um, it, it doesn't bother me in the slightest <laughs> to have cardboard boxes and these shelves are to serve me. So just that's something to keep in mind. Know yourself, know what you need and what va you value and what brings you joy as you do organization. Something else I know about myself is I have a very, very good visual spatial memory. So I don't, I don't need uh, an organization system like a digital catalog. Um, a lot of homeschoolers find that very useful, especially when they have a ton of books or a lot of kids, a lot of curriculum they need to keep organized. They do spreadsheets or they do digital catalogs. For me, I don't have all that much stuff. And also, I'm, I just know what I have. Uh, I, I know what I have and I know where it is because I am organized. So I just keep it simple. Um, the different boxes are used for different purposes. Some people like to use different boxes for different topics or different types. I'm using an organization system that suits my needs right now and my season of life right now. We're not at a point where we're studying all different topics. You know, I have a two-year-old and a three-year-old. I don't need a space shelf and a human body resource shelf and, you know, a American Revolution <laughs> shelf. I don't need separating by topics. I do kind of need separation by age-appropriate levels and I, um, language is also something very important in our homeschool. We are bilingual homeschoolers in Spanish and English, so I also separate by language. Let me walk you through what some of my separations are. Um, many parents of young children know that there is a lot of awesomeness to be found in height-based organization. So here on the floor, you're going to notice I have two shelves of board books. These the boys can get into at any time. They can pull off the shelf. They're easily accessible even for my very little one. They can sit in front of here and read board books. But these are <laughs> free access, easy access to very little people. But the higher you go up the shelf, generally speaking, the um, more complex the material. Here I do have my um, Bible and devotional shelf. Then over here, those are also board books, but they're more interactive and they have different pieces. So I do try to only have them get those out with me. We've got a couple activities and boxes there. Then this shelf is our picture book. These are our picture book shelves. And this is the level that my older son is solidly at right now. These are the shelves I'm constantly pulling from for our morning times. This is my Spanish shelf and this is my English shelf. You might notice a couple of oddities in here. This is not actually a typical um, children's picture book right here, um, but they love it a lot. It's kind of a coffee table book with pictures of tractors. This gets a lot of use. Then up here on the top shelves, we have what we're not really getting into yet at all. These are my higher level Spanish um, books. We have read a handful of these already, um, but these are the longer ones. We have the Mercy Watson, which we've already read. We have a handful of longer, more complex picture books, some beginner chapter books there. And then these are also my very small collection of 
older English picture books. These are the longer or more thematically mature picture books. And a, do I have any chapter books? I guess that one's a sort of a chapter book. And then I have a couple of just my books, things I'm in the process of reading. I also have a tablet that charges up here and a box of markers, which are not so easily accessible by the toddlers when they are located out of sight and out of mind. Then another good tip is if you do any literature-based learning, don't like separate out all the books that go with your literature-based curriculum. Keep them all together. It will save you a lot of headaches. So this is my shelf for what I own for Gentle and Classical Primer and Gentle and Classical Nature. The cards are in this box, the memory cards, and and then it's slightly mixed up here, but I have some of the core books for nature or books I'm using with the nature and then books I'm using with the um, primer. I have, I'm opting to put in as much Spanish as I can once I start primer. I have not started primer yet, um, but we, I, I opt for Spanish versions of the books. This goes with nature whenever possible um, and when it makes sense to. Then here, for the most part, I did have to add this in because there wasn't really another good place for this, but this is, for the most part, Sunlight Preschool. So I also keep all the Sunlight Preschool books together. Everybody knows, everyone knows this already, you gotta have a dedicated place for your uh, library books. So these are library books that need to be returned. When my husband brings new library books, we will, they will also go on this shelf. They always go on this shelf. This is where they stay. Um, down here is workbooks that we haven't started yet or that I'm just holding on to for the future. Some for my younger son as he grows, as I've just picked up or been given different workbooks. And then some for my older son. Then about half of it is random activities like paint with water activities or color wonder markers or notebooks so that, oh, when they're like, mommy, I want to do a craft, I want to paint. I can just grab from there. I have a couple of different, these are different just activities, educational games there, Magna Cubes, and writing tablet, animal figurines. These are kind of our, they're like toys, games, but more educational things I'll just pull out when I want to, pull out on occasion. These are baby books and photo albums right there, and a tripod, YouTuber problems. <laughs> I, it's a convenient place for me to keep it because I film downstairs. And this um, box is a treasure box full of all the things I don't want boys to see and you know have in their minds on a regular basis. We've got glue, glitter, paint. Um, we've got the lentils for sensory bins. We've got all sorts of delightful treasures in there that also need to be kept out of reach. Then here, I, I need to figure out something to do with this. If you have any suggestions, let me know. This was a recent find when we were moving. I forgot I had this. I made this years ago and I had it wrapped around a piece of cork board, like a bulletin board when we were in America. Um, but then I packed it without the board and now I'm not sure how to hang that up effectively. Uh, we've got this, so this is just a little kind of drawers, plastic drawers. The top one is for scrap paper or construction paper for crafts. Here we've got our sidewalk chalk and our spares of tape and glue and there's spare um, crayons behind there. These are different games and puzzles. Um, some of mine are kind of in rough condition, but don't judge us too much. A lot of what we had, we're like the third family to own it, you know. It was passed down to my mom. It was passed down from my mom to me. You know, especially, um, I think that's true in the US homeschool environment, but it's especially true in the overseas homeschool community. There's a lot of passing around of resources because it can be really hard to get resources. Hey, I hope you found it kind of helpful and just fun to see how we've set up our homeschool space. And this is just a whole kind of corner off from my kitchen. I can basically reach out and touch my crock pot if I wanted to, but I'm not going to because it's very hot and it is filled with barbecue pork for our dinner tonight. And 
that's my space. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. See you next time.